just as the product rule tells us how to find the derivative of a function formed by multiplying two building blocks together, we can also find the derivative of a function that's formed from dividing one function by another, thinking of the numerator and the denominator as simpler building blocks. And the rule for this is called the quotient rule. It looks a little bit like the product rule, but it's certainly a bit more complicated. First of all, you have a minus sign instead of a plus sign, and there's a fraction. The whole expression in the numerator is divided by the quantity g of x squared. Now, because of that minus sign, it's important to get the order of the numerator correct. If you put the f of x g prime of x first instead of second, you're going to get the wrong answer. So it's important to get the order of the numerator correct. Now, it's probably going to be difficult to try to memorize this formula if you're just learning it for the first time by thinking of it symbolically. You might be better off trying to think of it verbally. For the quotient rule, you can think of it this way. The bottom times the derivative of the top, that's g of x times f prime, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, that's f of x times g prime of x all divided by the bottom squared. There's also a very short formula to think of this uh, verbally. Uh, instead of top and bottom, you can think of high and low. And instead of saying derivative, you can just say d. So you have low d high minus high d low over low squared. That's low times the derivative of high minus high times the derivative of low over low squared. You're going to want to come up with one way or another to memorize this formula. Let's see it in action. Suppose we need to find the derivative of this function, 2t plus 3 over 4t minus 1. Well, according to the quotient rule, the derivative, h prime of t, is going to be the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all divided by the bottom function squared and the derivative of the top function is just 2 the derivative of the bottom function is just 4 So this is the derivative. Now you could actually expand and simplify the numerator if you want. Completely simplifying would give you the answer negative 14 divided by 4t minus 1 quantity squared. That's the derivative of the function we started with. Here's another example. Find the derivative of f of x equals 2x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. Now, I chose f of x here because a lot of times that's how we're going to be writing functions. And if you try to use the symbolic formula for the quotient rule to calculate the derivative each time, you're going to get a little bit confused if you're used to thinking of f as representing the function in the numerator but instead f is supposed to represent the entire function. So this is another reason why it's a good idea to think of this verbally. We can take the derivative without talking about the numerator and denominator as f and g. We can just talk about taking the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all divided by the bottom function squared. The derivative of the top function is 4x. The derivative of the bottom function is 1. And if you simplify this completely, you end up with 2x squared plus 4x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 quantity squared as the derivative. 